Mark Kurlinski, Cod, A Biography of the Fish That Changed the World. Step into a fascinating tale of the fish that profoundly influenced the world, as we explore Mark Kurlinski's Cod, A Biography of the Fish That Changed the World. Venture into the world of the Basque people, the first to discover cod, and follow the journey of this resourceful fish from its first profitable ventures to the precipice of its extinction. We will witness the conflicts and alliances forged between nations, dive into the innovations that transformed the fishing industry, from the French invention of longline fishing to the impact of steam engines, and uncover the important lessons whether the cod will ever make a big comeback. The Basque Salted Cod Legacy Ever wondered why the tradition of eating salted cod is so popular in southern Europe? The Basques, a small population from modern-day northwest Spain, were the first to catch and preserve cod using salt, and it all began as they set sail for North America in pursuit of whale meat. En route, they discovered cod, cured it with salt, and found a resource that not only fed them on their long journeys but also brought them wealth back home. The Catholic Church's fasting practice meant that many people turned to fish, providing a lucrative market for the Basque salted cod. For a while, the Basques managed to keep their cod fishing methods and locations a secret, but eventually, the demand for the fish led to conflict. Cod Craze and Colonial Tension At the onset of the 16th century, the discovery of Newfoundland and the profitable cod fishing industry led to a flurry of activity from European nations, all wanting a share of the lucrative trade. Cod quickly dominated 60% of the European market, prompting cooperative efforts between nations to meet the high demand. The British, lacking salt, partnered with salt-rich Portugal, but the alliance was short-lived, as Portugal soon joined forces with Spain. An aggrieved Britain retaliated against the Spanish and Portuguese fleets, effectively halting Portugal's influence in the Newfoundland fishing scene. Meanwhile, in the American colonies, the booming European trade was fostering a sense of self-sufficiency among New Englanders, particularly in Boston. The growing independence of colonists and their expanding trade network eventually led to the American Revolution. In its aftermath, Bitter disputes over fishing rights persisted until the British were granted exclusive access to the Canadian Grand Banks. At that time, the seemingly endless supply of cod had people believing it would last forever. However, as new fishing technologies emerged, perceptions about the sustainability of cod fishing quickly shifted. Fishing Innovations and Overfishing Longline fishing, invented by the French in the 19th century, emerged as an effective technique for catching large quantities of fish, especially along the Canadian coast. With its potential for big catches, French fishermen were even subsidized by their government. However, the practice also sparked controversy as it raised concerns about overfishing, with countries like Iceland fearing its detrimental effects on marine life. Prominent figures like British philosopher Thomas Henry Huxley expressed strong belief in the robustness of oceanic resources and dismissed these concerns, exacerbating the overfishing crisis. As longline fishing became increasingly popular, it not only depleted fish populations, but also masked the issue, contributing to a dangerous disregard for the seriousness of overfishing. Revolutionizing Seafood Through Technology the steam engine's invention is often associated with the Industrial Revolution, but its impact on the fishing industry is less recognized. In the 19th century, European waters faced depleted fish stocks, leading those in the fishing industry to explore steam-powered boats. This newfound power enabled the development of innovative techniques like the otter trawl, significantly increasing fish catches, six times greater, in fact, than with previous methods. However, this created a new challenge, getting all these fish to the market while still fresh. Enter Clarence Birdseye, an eccentric New Yorker who relocated to Labrador, Canada, and experimented with freezing vegetables. Birdseye discovered that frozen vegetables retained their flavor, making them enjoyable during Canada's harsh winters. Initially freezing cabbage with saltwater and the freezing Arctic winds, Birdseye eventually refined his technique with a fan and ice, replicating the conditions of his initial success. 
Birdseye's freezing invention soon attracted the attention of the cod fishing industry, enabling them to transport fresh fillets of cod to eager consumers. Consequently, the steam engine and freezing technology revolutionized the fishing industry, transforming how seafood was caught and preserved. The Historic Cod Wars The early 1900s saw the rapid depletion of fish stocks in the North Sea, particularly cod, due to overfishing by the British. As Britain's attention turned to Icelandic waters, Iceland found itself in a battle to protect its fish supply. Independence from Denmark after World War II brought determination to safeguard their fishing industry and led Iceland to push for territorial expansion around its coast. This sparked three cod wars between Iceland and Britain, each arising whenever Iceland extended its territorial limits. Finally, after reaching a 200-mile limit, Britain conceded, allowing Iceland to retain a healthy cod supply. In the early 20th century, the depletion of North Sea cod due to overfishing, particularly by the British, led to a focus on Icelandic waters. Iceland, which prided itself on traditional fishing methods and a healthy stock, found itself faced with modern British fishing tactics. This resulted in not only Iceland updating its fleet, but also the formation of a new Icelandic entrepreneurial class. Recognizing that cod reproduction was limited, Icelanders understood the danger of their fish stocks depleting as the North Seas had. World Wars I and II provided temporary respite from British fishing, but when Iceland gained independence from Denmark, they were determined to protect their fish supply. The key to safeguarding their industry involved expanding Iceland's territorial fishing limits, thus keeping other nations away. Gradually, Iceland achieved an extension from 3 to 4 miles and eventually to 12 miles. However, this dramatic expansion directly affected British fishers, leading to ongoing conflicts known as the Cod Wars. The Second Cod War began when Iceland further extended the limit to 50 miles on September 1, 1972. British fishers continued to breach these limits, prompting the Icelanders to retaliate by cutting nets and releasing catches. Ultimately, Iceland succeeded in enlarging the limit to 200 miles. The British, finding this too restrictive, finally accepted the expanded territory, which remains in effect to this day. Consequently, Iceland has successfully maintained a healthy supply of cod. The Cautionary Cod Tale Iceland was wise in implementing fishing regulations to protect their cod populations, but other countries weren't as proactive. One such example is Canada, which overfished cod for years resulting in a dramatic decline in the species population. In 1992, Canada implemented a moratorium that limited cod fishing which, although saved cod from extinction, made the fish commercially unattractive. The story of cod serves as a cautionary tale, emphasizing the importance of sustainable resource management, but the future of cod remains uncertain as people continue to disregard how human intervention caused their near disappearance. In the world of fishing regulations, Iceland has always taken the smart route to protect their cod populations. Unfortunately, many nations, particularly those in North America, continue to overfish without proper regulation. Canada stands as a prime example of this severe issue. Following the removal of Spanish and Portuguese fishing fleets and resolving their border disputes with the United States, the Canadian fishing industry experienced significant growth. However, this growth led to an increased number of boats, processing plants, and catches, ultimately endangering the cod population. As cod numbers dwindled, the Canadian government misjudged the situation, considering it just a temporary problem that would resolve on its own. Little did they know that this was far from a mere fluctuation. Cod populations were gravely overfished, demanding urgent intervention. Finally, in 1992, Canada's fisheries minister announced a moratorium on cod fishing, restricting its allowance and putting 30,000 fishermen out of work. While this decision saved Canadian cod from extinction, it also rendered the fish commercially unattractive, essentially destroying a 500-year-old industry. The story of cod poses an important cautionary tale regarding the consequences of unsustainable resource management practices. Although hope remains that cod may recover, 
such optimism is often tarnished by ignorance surrounding human impact on the species' decline. Until this critical connection is acknowledged and addressed, the future of cod and the fishing industry at large remains uncertain. As the saga of the cod comes to a close, we are reminded of the world-changing impact of a humble fish. Kurlinski's Cod, a biography of the fish that changed the world, invites readers on an enthralling journey through history, international conflicts, and the evolution of fishing. The consequences of overfishing serve as a cautionary tale that emphasizes the need for better awareness and sustainable practices. Although it's uncertain if the cod will ever return to its former glory, this book leaves us with deeper knowledge and appreciation of the fish that transformed the world, urging us to value and protect our natural resources, 